Hi, I'm Dr. Rhett Polka and I'd like to welcome you to today's 180 Physical Therapy video newsletter where our focus will be good shoe versus bad shoe. Oftentimes when I first see a patient we end up talking about shoes. Unfortunately when I ask them about their shoes or look at their shoes they tell me that the problem can't be because of their shoes because they've got really good shoes or they've spent a lot of money on their shoes. This is usually a red light for me because most people don't understand what a good shoe and a bad shoe is. So today I brought in some shoes that we'll take a look at. I won't tell you what a good shoe and a bad shoe is to begin with because I want you to think about that as we break them down. Take a look at today's shoes, use your brain, see if you can figure out which is good and which is bad, and then at the end we'll go over why good shoes are good shoes and why bad shoes are bad shoes and what they do to your body. Okay, we have a wide variety of footwear here to look at. So what I'm going to do is kind of break them down into two groups without saying which is good or which is bad. I'll describe each shoe to you as I put them in a group. So think to yourself what you think would be the good shoe pile and the bad shoe pile. First, let's take a look at a men's dress shoe. Pretty basic, nothing fancy, actually extremely flimsy. You can roll this thing up just like a burrito, no support at all no arch, no support. So we're going to put that over in this pile, which would be no support, flexi, flimsible shoe. Let's look at a woman's casual shoe. This one, very rigid, can't move it at all. Has somewhat of a, a high arch on the inside. And once again, no motion would keep your foot in one place and not let it move. So we'll put that one over here. Another men's casual shoe. Once again, extremely flimsy, no support, no arch. We'll put over with this guy. Now let's look at a woman's running shoe. Pretty flimsible, uh, flexible, easy to bend. If you look at the bottom of it, it has kind of a curved outsole, has this dugout in the middle, so there's no arch support there. So we'll put this with the flimsy group. Here's a men's running shoe. If we look at the bottom of it, more straight than this one, which was more of a curve. Lots of support on the inside, very rigid, stiff, actually has a piece of plastic there so you can't move. No motion at all, won't let your foot move. So we'll put that guy over here. Now let's look at another woman's shoe. Once again, curved here, no arch support, pretty flimsy flexible. We'll toss that over here. Men's shoe, athletic shoe, training shoe, pretty flimsy, flexible, no arch support once again. We'll put that over here. Take one of these rocker bottom shoes that have become the in thing for people who want to lose weight without exercising or have low back pain and want to get rid of their low back pain. So absolutely no motion in this shoe. Actually dictates the motion that your foot will go through, doesn't let your foot do anything. So we'll put that over here with the stiff ones. The other extreme are these guys, which you may have seen. Absolutely nothing to them. No arch support. Actually let your toes move individually. So one extreme to the other, this pile and this pile. Now take a couple of seconds and think to yourself, which of these piles would be the good shoes and bad shoes? Lots of support, no support. Rigid, flimsy. Okay, time's up. Did you figure it out? If you're still a little bit stumped, I'm going to let you cheat a little bit and give you a hint. I'll show you what kind of shoes I wear every day. Here's my work shoe. It's a Nike Free. No support. No arch. Very minimalistic, very flimsy, soft, and would fall in this category. So, hopefully by now you figured out that this would be the good shoe, this would be the bad shoe. If you pick this pile and thought that you want a shoe that's rigid and keeps your foot from moving, controls your motion, we have some more things to talk about. The biggest misconception that people have when it comes to shoes is they think that shoes are supposed to support your feet. This is incorrect. Your foot was constructed and made to support itself. That's why it has muscles. Muscles are supposed to support your foot and give it stability. If we take your foot and we stick it in a condition where it does not have to support itself, those muscles get lazy, get weak, atrophy, and then you have foot problems. 
So let's take a look at these shoes more in depth. If we take a look at this Vibram Five Finger Shoe, we see that it does absolutely nothing for your foot except protect it from the surface that you are standing on, walking on, or running on. That's why it's a good shoe. It lets your foot live the way it was supposed to live, the way it was supposed to be made. If we take a look at this running shoe, we see that there's no motion going on whatsoever. This means your foot can't move. If your foot can't move, the rest of your body has to absorb the pressure that your foot was supposed to absorb. And if your foot can't move, your body can't move normally either. That's why these shoes are the kinds of shoes that I take away from people on a daily basis. Another big misconception with people who come in is that they think that pronation is bad. They say, well, I have to wear these shoes because I'm a pronator. Or I went to the running store and they gave me this shoe because I'm a pronator. Guess what? You're supposed to be a pronator. The problem isn't pronating. The problem is pronating too fast without control or not supinating after you pronate. If we take a look at a foot, and I use my hand as a model, if this is your right foot and I'm facing you, this is the motion that's supposed to go on at your foot. The arch should fall down as you bear weight, which is called pronation. As you roll forward on the foot and step forward, the foot should supinate. So pronation is normal. It has to happen for normal motion to occur. It has to happen for normal function to occur. It has to happen for you to be healthy. As you see my foot here pronate, you also see that it twists my elbow, which would be a knee in this situation, and my shoulder, which would be a hip in this situation. As your foot pronates, your knee pronates. As your foot pronates, your knee pronates, and your hip pronates. This follows up the kinetic web as a chain reaction, and that's how your foot is supposed to function with the rest of your body. As soon as we put you in a situation where you cannot, can no longer pronate at the foot, you can no longer pronate at the knee, you can no longer pronate at the hip, and now your mechanics are a mess. While we're talking about pronation and mechanics, let's take a look at these guys. These are just over-the-counter inserts. These aren't prescription orthotics, so they're not as bad as a prescription orthotic, but they're still not good. This is my favorite pair here. The patient came in wearing these because he was a pronator. So the doctor said, well, you're a pronator. We need to stop pronation from happening. We need to control your motion for you because there's no way we could actually re-educate the muscles to work the way they're supposed to. We have to put you in a brace, in effect, to control the motion for you. So he put the patient in these and he wore them for a couple weeks and his problem didn't go away. Matter of fact, he had more problems. So we went back to the foot expert and said, well, these inserts that you gave me, you know, they're kind of bugging my feet. And not only do I have the problem that I had before, but now I have this pain over here. So logically, what did the foot expert do? Said, well, you know, we're pushing you too far this way. We're pushing you too far into supination. We don't want to do that. We want you to, we want to push you into pronation, but we don't want you to pronate. So how about we put this on the outside of the arch so now we have the arch support pushing you this way so you can't pronate. Now we have this little construction pushing you that way so you can't supinate. Basically folding his foot in half so he's got a foot taco going on. Not a good idea. Anytime you have a good pair of shoes, you can easily make them a bad pair of shoes by putting in some type of arch support. You've just taken a nice flexible shoe that will let your foot do what it's supposed to do and now stuck an arch support in there so it can't do what it's supposed to do anymore and now you've got problems. One last thing I wanted to talk about was this shoe. You know the shoes that are supposed to help you lose weight and you don't even have to work out? This is a fantastic shoe to look at when you want to see bad mechanics. When you're out in public, people watching, Try to find somebody who has a pair of these on and take a look at what they're doing. When you walk, your heel should hit, roll through here, come up on the toes and step off. With these guys, you get an exaggerated heel strike, which will send the knee into hyperextension, causing knee problems, send the back 
into hyperlordosis, which will put pressure on that, which isn't supposed to be there. And now that this shoe is built to rock forward for you, now the, the muscles in your feet and your legs that are supposed to work on propulsion to push you forward and stabilize you as you walk have totally been shut down so they do absolutely nothing. Luckily the people that I've caught wearing these into the clinic haven't worn them too long, they've kept the receipt and were able to send them back to the store and get a refund so they can get something more functional and better for their body. Which brings me to one more key when you're looking for shoes. This shoe is probably a $60 shoe. This shoe is about a $120 shoe. One of the things that you can use to look for good shoes and bad shoes is look for price. The more junk they put in a shoe that you don't need, the higher the price. The more basic the shoe is, the let your foot do what it's supposed to do, the lower the price. I hope this has shed some light on what a good shoe is and what a bad shoe is. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me by email or phone call, and I'll try to help you out the best I can. One more piece of information, if you have been wearing bad shoes, or you have been wearing inserts, and you go directly to wearing a good shoe or going barefoot, you may have problems because you've retarded the muscle in your feet and your legs. They can no longer work, so when you put them here, you're gonna have pain. That doesn't mean this is the problem. That means this was the problem. You have to re-educate your shoe before you can, re-educate your foot before you can go from this to this. So if you have problems getting out of bad shoes and into good shoes, going from shoes to barefoot, give me a call. That means we need to work on re-educating your feet. Thanks for watching. Hope this was informative for you, and we look forward to seeing you on the next video newsletter. Thanks.